let me share this. I've been photographing Yellowstone for 48 years. I was one of the guys that pioneered infrared still photography and another thing called reversal, where you take, just real quick, you take uh, uh, slides, you reverse them into negative, and you can see a lot of stuff. Infrared means it responds to the heat and not just the visible light spectrum. I've flown Yellowstone probably, you know, with no exaggeration, close to 100 hours with some of the most sophisticated cameras that are available to the civilian market. I'm talking 8K, and you know what 8K is. I'm talking about places I've seen and I know. And in our newest film, Cascadia, Mondo, the real problems on the West Coast, Mount Hood right now is having cluster quakes or seismic swarms. I've been in Yellowstone when there have been 800 micro tremors, but the whole magma pool under Yellowstone is moving to the coast. It's moving to the coast. So I interviewed, uh, actually my film crew interviewed uh, some of the smartest scientists in the world, some of the smartest. One of them is a professor emeritus, uh, Bob Smith at Yellowstone. Brilliant man. And and the point is, is that people always say, and I, I don't know when Cascadia is going to erupt, but I'll tell you this, the government is so concerned there's a gag order on it. NASA and the different scientific bodies, including the CIA, including the NSA, they all have their separate uh, takes on things flew at least 10,000 flights. That means the plane would land. If it went up three times, that's three flights times, however, over a year. Ridgecrest earthquake, when it destroyed the China Lake Naval Weapons Laboratory out in the desert, uh, east, or east of Los Angeles, was one of the biggest earthquake swarms in history. But people got to understand, China Lake sits on a magma chamber. So when people tell me, oh, Quail's a hypocrite because he lives in Yellowstone, I know it with no exaggeration, like the back of my hand. Doesn't mean there can't be something outside of my knowledge, but the Norris Geyser Basin. The Norris Geyser Basin is where the magma is closest to the surface. I've been blessed to be able to go down there at least, at least once every three months, sometimes twice every three months, both in winter and both in summer and spring. And everything is moving. Everything is moving away. So, Mondo, that is a... I, I should say this, that's a diversion. Mount Hood has no seismic station on the top of it. When we flew uh, Mount Rainier, Mount Hood, Mount Adams, all of the Seven Sisters, I mean, there are, there are 11 of the most active volcanoes. That doesn't mean they're spewing yet, but in the United States, they're all on the West Coast, up and down the West Coast, from Mount Shasta all the way up to Mount Rainier. So... I've been on the top of Mount Rainier. I've been on the top of some of these mountains in a helicopter. I'm not a mountain climber. But I can tell you this. When those things begin to go, and see, I don't know the time. And I, I asked the Lord. I said, Lord, let me know the time. And he says, Steve, it depends on the free will of my people. I will tell you this, though, that Henry Groover, one of the mightiest men of God, he's gone to be with the Lord now, when he saw the Russians invading the United States on the West Coast, he saw the magma flow from those mounts, and he saw all of them go active at the same time. So much ash that even the jet fighters and the bombers that would be heading east from the West Coast were crashing because there's nothing worse than silica and all of the particulate matter that goes up in the upper atmosphere. This is why our growing season is so bad. And Mondo, just to put everybody in, into perspective, one of the very first things, one of the, I think either the first or second show I ever did when I came on my own program in KHNC in Colorado, quarter of a century ago, I said, when you see the volcanoes of the world, the major volcanoes of the world erupting and cannibalism, I don't know, I, you know, I'm not a fan of cannibalism, but that's what God said. Know that the tribulations are beginning, plural. I, I got to tell you something. Jesus said, in this world, we will have tribulations, you know? And when you look at, everybody wants to put that tribulation at some time in the future. And I think that they're missing the events that are taking place right now. And I'll, I'll tell you something, too. I'm on record as saying the devil is now moving. And, it, you know, the last plague, the firstborn of the Egyptians being killed, you know, uh, the second last plague, 
And and the devil beat that by his old routine by killing all the babies, killing all our brothers and sisters. And that's the sad part, Mondo. The part that really bothers me is that what happened to the heart? What happened to the heart of the living God expressed through people? And, you know, I just basically am saying this. The reason sin is reigning in the church, the reason Ichabod is written over the door, they can put the fanciest, biggest Easter parades on. And by the way, I don't call it Easter. I call it Resurrection Sunday. They can do all this stuff, but they have no power. Having a form of godliness, but denying the Holy Spirit thereof. So the passion and the desire to warn as many people, and what you heard today, ladies and gentlemen, on the January 18th, no matter when this plays, I had to set, set that. What's happening in Washington, D.C., where a house divided against itself and a nation will not stand, we've got ethnos against ethnos. That's what nation against nation means. We've got kingdoms against kingdoms. And it's my concern, Mondo, that God will lead his people into a place of refuge. But we are at a Red Sea moment 